Good morning, everyone. This event is organized by the Vegan Society. Um, I'm Kadri from the Vegan Society. And um, so just a few words about our organization. So we were uh, founded in uh, 2012, and we have got uh, a little bit over 200 members um, uh, today. And uh, we would like to invite um, those who are not members to, to join us, um, to become members. And you will find information on our homepage, uh, vegan.de, um, about how to join us. And then also on vegan.de, you have the opportunity to uh, support us. So we have recently joined this uh, online uh, platform where you can make donations. And also vegan.de has a lot of information about veganism. So we would like to invite you to, to take a look at our website. Um, and um, just uh, just a, f a few more words before I go to the introduction of you and the lecture. So we uh, just recently uh, we've got some information materials, and uh, this this one is on uh, is in Estonian on healthy plant-based eating, and you can take this. It's sort of uh, all the necessary information condensed into uh, this small leaflet, so you can find that uh, right there at the entrance, uh, along with uh, snacks, uh, some uh, hazelnuts, which you are welcome to, to take. Um, and um, so another piece of information, so we will be uh, showing um, a documentary uh, from the makers of Cowspiracy, and it's called What the Health. Uh, so this will be shown in uh, Kumu in Tallinn on the 6th of uh, September, so uh, you're all welcome to uh, um, come to the screening and and we'll have a discussion afterwards. I hear that it's quite a controversial movie. I, I have not seen it myself yet. Um, so uh, let me uh, then introduce you our speaker. We're very delighted to, to have over here from Sweden, Dr. David Stenholz, um, who is an oncologist and he works in the uh, South Central Hospital in, in Stockholm. And he's also the... Uh, head or the chair of the organization Doctors for the Future. And uh, he's been giving lectures on, on plant-based eating and you can, you can add more information about yourself as you, as you speak. So uh, his lecture today will, uh, will be on uh, the benefits uh, of, of plant-based uh, eating, on the health effects of plant-based eating. And the lecture will be um, around 50 minutes. And then uh, please don't leave after that, because then there will be an uh, uh, opportunity to ask uh, questions and to discuss. So thank you for joining us, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. I'm very honored to be invited here. Thank you to the Vegan Society for making it possible for me to come here and lecture. I'm. Uh, must say I'm very impressed by their work. So do make a donation if you want. Sometimes if uh, an NGO asks for asks for uh, a donation, you wonder does this money really come to anything? And uh, looking at the work they are doing at the Vegan Society with so little resources, I must say that for every euro donated, there will be a lot of work done, definitely. Um, I'm uh, going to talk on the health benefits of a plant-based diet. Uh, we're going to look through some guidelines from expert panels and, um, and also uh, a few individual studies that I find uh, extra interesting. Um, Uh, this is um, uh, me at work. I'm an oncologist, as was said, and work mostly with radiotherapy. So uh, in my profession, I specifically don't work with uh, nutrition. So the nutrition, the knowledge I've acquired in, of nutrition has mostly been self-studies in the uh, evenings and weekends and the research projects that I've been involved with. Um, uh, we founded uh, this organization, Physicians for the Future. Um, it's uh, well, more than three years ago now. And um, uh, we've uh, actually also managed to do quite a lot with very little resources. Uh, um, we've uh, 
uh, mostly our uh, activity is uh, based on uh, on the internet uh, on our home page and uh, social media where we spread information on health benefits of plant-based diet and um, we've written uh, debate articles in the biggest uh, newspapers in Sweden we've had three uh, articles in the largest uh, morning newspaper in Sweden which is uh, which we're very very happy <laughs> about and also we've been on national television a couple of times and um, we're doing a lot of lectures almost one lecture a week uh, all over Sweden for hospitals and uh, events like this where we are invited so diet really interests everyone because everyone eats uh, this is our homepage. It's uh, naturally in Swedish. Uh, so if you if you want to receive information from us, um, I think uh, it's uh, probably better to follow us on Facebook because uh, maybe every second or every third thing we share is is uh, English, uh, uh, mostly an article from the English media. Um, it's not only our health that can benefit from eating a more plant-based diet. Uh, there are many other benefits. I, I'm curious, how many in here are vegans? Raise your hand. And how many of you who are vegans are eating B12 regularly? Almost everyone. <laughs> Make sure you do. This is very important. I'll get back to that. Um, but. Um, in uh, in recent years, uh, I've, we have seen an tremendous interest in eating more plant-based. Uh, the amounts, the percentage of vegetarian and vegans are rising very rapidly uh, all over Europe. In Sweden, we've seen a doubling uh, the past five years. I, I don't know if there are any numbers available for Estonia, but someone told me that two or three years ago there wasn't a single vegan restaurant here in Tallinn, and now you have eight in a very short time. And this is, of course, um, a sign that the information on all these benefits are reaching a broader population. Uh, animals nationally, na naturally benefit from us not eating them or... or uh, uh, confining them or uh, hurting them. Our health is the topic for today. It's also good for the environment, uh, not to eat animal products. These are the three main uh, reasons that are often lifted as sort of a triad, but I've managed to identify three more. Uh, the global food supply would benefit immensely. I would say if we in Europe stopped eating just just stopped eating red meat, there would probably be enough food for everyone in the world. There would be no starvation. Bono, the singer of uh, U2, uh, announced uh, two or three years ago that he had uh, become a vegan. And the reason he stated was this, uh, because it's been one of his main issues that he, he, he's been working with. Uh, cognitive dissonance. How many here knows what cognitive dissonance is? A few. It's uh, uh, to, uh, sh short. In short term, it's it's the gap between our values and our actions. That we we have values. Uh, we don't want to hurt the environment, but still we do, and this uh, creates a tension. And I would say that there is no no such gap that is greater than uh, than how we treat animals. I, I would say that no, no human being has the values that he wants to hurt other living beings unnecessarily. And still we confine billions of, uh, of uh, living uh, sentient individuals uh, every year and slaughter them when they are just uh, very small. And this gap is, is enormous. And it creates tension and stress. Uh, I have, um, I ha um, there is a Zen master, uh, Zen Buddhist master called Thich Nhat Hanh. He has a huge monastery in the south of uh, France. Um, 
if you have the opportunity, go there. He doesn't teach anymore because he had a hemorrhag hemorrhagic stroke uh, one or two years ago. <coughs> but he once said uh, uh, in uh, in one of his lectures that it's uh, if you if you want to develop yourself spiritually, if you want to achieve peace of mind, you cannot eat a diet that is produced by death and violence and suffering. It's very, very well put, I think. This is cognitive dissonance. <clears throat> and the economy, the, the global economy would benefit uh, naturally. Um, it's uh, difficult to remember everything from a lecture, uh, so I, I, I'm going to start with the like introduction, with three uh, three main points. Uh, uh, I uh, I've chosen to depict them as flowers, so you can take these three flowers with you and then then share them with everyone you know. One of them you can bring out and and give it to someone. Uh, the first one is the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Uh, was anyone at the debate yesterday? Uh, so you, you might know what I'm, uh, <laughs> what I'm after here. Um, does anyone know what the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics is? Uh, it's, it's a long and uh, uh, complicated names, but if you can memorize it, Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, uh, you have a very good uh, uh, source of knowledge uh, that you can share. Uh, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics is the largest, the world's largest and most prominent uh, professional organization of, of uh, dietitians and nutritionists. So whatever they have to say about uh, diet is very, very, uh, well, brings, brings a lot of confidence. And uh, uh, it's very relevant today when we talk of plant-based diet because um, have any one of you heard, uh, any one of you who are vegan ever heard anyone express concern that you're not getting enough nutrients? Maybe not enough protein. <laughs> Anyone heard that last month or today? Uh, well, then, then uh, it's a very good uh, counterpoint that uh, if you have a good memory, you can also memorize this sentence that the world's largest professional organization of dietitians and nutritionists states that a well-planned vegan diet is healthy nutritionally adequate and appropriate in all stages of life, period. It's um, uh, very important because uh, not only the average person, even healthcare practitioners, politicians, and uh, some so-called experts uh, express the view that, uh, well, it's okay for some to be vegan, but it requires a tremendous amount of knowledge and definitely you can definitely not be vegan while you're pregnant or small children. But you can, the science says you can and uh, the, the main expert says you can. So if you Google uh, Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics vegan, if you Google that you will come to this document, the position statement of uh, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics and you, you will see just, you don't need to read the whole paper, but uh, please do. It has a lot of important information. Just a few, two sentences states what I just said. Second flower to bring with you is the World Cancer Research Fund. Does anyone know who they are? Uh, the World Cancer Research Fund is also number one <laughs> when it comes to authority and size and, and uh, integrity and knowledge about uh, nutrition and cancer. And uh, so it's very, very relevant to know what they feel about cancer risk and what you should eat and not eat. And they are quite um, outspoken when it comes to 
eating more plants, uh, they, they recommend the following for preventing cancer. Enjoy a plant-based diet. I like it that this is what they literally say, enjoy, because uh, it's definitely an enjoyment to eat a plant-based diet, wouldn't you say? Enjoy a plant-based diet, greatly reduce intake of red meat and avoid processed meat. And uh, uh, I think it's very, uh, speaks very well of them that they, they actually say avoid processed meat. They don't say reduce. They say this is a, if you want to, if you want to prevent cancer, you should not eat processed meat. That's ham, sausages and bacon. And you can also find them online, Google World Cancer Research Fund, or, or go to their website, dietandcancerreport.org. They produce this uh, enormous report, so if you're a scientist or, or if you have a very large interest, you can read the thousands of pages. Uh, they have more recommendations, these are all of them, T 10 altogether. Also that you shouldn't drink too much alcohol, move more, breastfeed, uh, less uh, salt, etc. Uh, third flower to bring with you is a healthy heart. I think this is um, the most important, this is actually what inspired me to spend my spare time lecturing and uh, spreading information. This is the one disease where you have definitely shown superior effects of a completely plant-based diet compared to just Mediterranean diet or, or uh, general recommendations. There are multiple studies today that have shown that patients with cardiovascular disease who change to a plant-based diet can reverse their disease. And uh, this is this is only shown when the advice are given on com I, as a virtually completely plant-based diet. One of the studies, it was allowed to drink a little, little skimmed milk, uh, but just a little. And um, uh, this this hasn't been shown by any any pharmaceutical. There's no medication that can do this, and there's no. No procedure that can do this. This is the only way. If you have uh, cardiovascular disease or if you have risk factors for cardiovascular disease, I think you have the right to know this. Uh, so I think it's uh, almost uh, bordering on a, on a health scandal that uh, this message hasn't come through because th these studies wasn't published yesterday. Uh, here, here are four the first first two were were published in 1999 so that's uh, 18 years ago so 18 years have passed without this knowledge have have reached a broad broad base and many people do have uh, uh, risk factors for cardiovascular disease i would say uh, almost half of the population perhaps more uh, these studies are uh, um are uh, um, t told in the mo uh, a movie called Forks Over Knives. Have, an, uh, have anyone seen it? Hmm? Yeah, quite a lot of you. It's um, um, available on online uh, on several sources. So if you haven't seen it, see it. And those of you who have seen it, please uh, bring with you that, uh, at least in my view, this is a film that has... Uh, uh, very, very good scientific um, base, and also it's very, very heartwarming. It's uh, you, you can actually get to meet some uh, from this study uh, from Caldwell Esselstyn. You, you get to meet uh, three of the or two of the people at least who were in this cohort who reversed their disease and what it did for their uh, quality of life. Uh, I, um, the film uh, What the Health, uh, uh, I would also recommend you to see. It was said it was controversial and um, 
I would say that it is. I, I think overall it's a, it's, a, it's a good film and I recommend anyone seeing it, but um, I, they have unfortunately made uh, one or two errors. Uh, um, for one, they state that it's uh, scientifically proven that milk products raises the risk of breast cancer, and that's unfortunately false. Um, so, and there's one or two things more, but overall, uh, it's, it's worth seeing. So these are the three flowers, Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, World Cancer Research Fund, and a Healthy Heart. So, um, if you want to maximize your health benefits through diet, what can you do? I, I'm going to try to paint a picture of, uh, of the scientific um, um, situation today and uh, with, with a broad uh, brush so we don't have time to go into too many details but uh, definitely the, the first step if you want to eat healthier and uh, reduce your risk of chronic disease it's uh, basically eating more whole plant foods. That is uh, legumes, beans, that is beans, tofu, lentils, and um, fruits, um, vegetables, and whole grains, um, berries, nuts, and seeds. This is, this is the message from basically all uh, expert panels all, all over the world. All national uh, health authorities say this. All experts agree. And this is uh, one of our Im most important messages as an organization because uh, unfortunately a lot of people have, have the idea that experts disagree on diet. One expert says this, another says another thing, you don't know what to believe, so I'll just continue eating the way I've always done. But this is not so. This is uh, sweet how it looks in Sweden and unfortunately it's, <laughs> it's just uh, letters. So can see what it says. Um, so, but why do why do so many people think that that experts disagree? Um, one reason is the media logic that um, if you have a study that deviates, you have an outlier. You have a study that shows something that ninety nine percent of all other studies show. It's it has a strong uh, news value. Uh, especially uh, the evening press likes to have headlines that says it's, it's not dangerous to eat butter and even more um, serious media like Time magazine sometimes fall into these pits because uh, if you're a reporter you can't be an expert on diet and you don't know how to value a single study and it's hard to resist when you know if I make this headline we're going to sell a lot of magazines. Um, there is, a, I don't know if you had that problem here, but uh, I think in most, in Sweden at least, we've had uh, advocates of different meat diets, like the Atkins diet, and um, there are very few. Uh, in Sweden it's like four or five people, but they're very loud, and uh, their message that you can eat as much meat and butter and and, uh, and cream, as you like, is a very, very welcome message by very many people. People love to hear good things about their bad habits, so they, they get a lot of followers and a lot of money and invited to do a lot of lectures, and, and their activity also has a good news value. Uh, and the third is that the uh, food industry, actually, this is a lecture in its own, the food industry today uh, it's a great disappointment so far. All the contact I've had with them is uh, that the, the, the bulk of the food industry operates today in the same way that the tobacco industry did in the 50s and the 60s by actively trying to deny the, uh, the harm that some food products cause. And it's mainly animal products, sugar and, uh, uh, well, salt, uh, and um, especially sugar and, and animal products are the most uh, <laughs> money-bringing food items and it's in their interest that the consumption doesn't drop. 
So they hire uh, researchers, they support studies, and they have lobbying activity against politicians, all in, uh, with the goal of uh, not diminishing uh, consumption of, of uh, harmful food items. And I, I, I have a very difficulty <laughs> grasping this, how this can go on year after year in an in a enlightened society as uh, we live in today. But maybe it will change. Um, this is a drawing I, I've made. Just to summarize everything I know about diet in one picture, you see, uh, I think it's, uh, uh, according to uh, all uh, nutrition experts, the way to look at food is, uh, is, uh, is to look at food. <laughs> if you want, uh, uh, from a health point of view, you shouldn't look at different nutrients to say that, you, for example, to eat less carbs is uh, healthy. It's uh, irrelevant because it's the different food items that, that uh, the whole foods that either increase or decrease your risk of food. It doesn't matter exactly how much protein or, or carbohydrates they contain. And the most health health-promoting products are without question whole plant foods. And animal products are worse and gradually w worse. I've, I've tried to draw them here in a sort of like uh, stepwise worse and worse. Uh, the, um, skimmed uh, milk, low-fat dairy and fish is, is very difficult to scientifically say it's, it's a harmful product. It's uh, uh, probably a bit more neutral. If you change uh, meat to fish, it's definitely a, a great health benefit. Same with um, uh, oil and maybe processed fruit, like wine or, or um, fruit juice. It, uh, it increases your weight, but um, I, I wouldn't say that a little, little oil, uh, or some few, few teaspoons of oil per day is harming. Uh, but uh, but from the rest, I think I think this is how we should have our um, goal set. If you want to eat healthy, we should we should look at these food items as our food and cross these from our menu and and maybe maybe have some understanding that these we can add as spice probably without any harm if we like. Personally, I I'm a vegan, so I've I've crossed these out, but. Uh, I, I cross these out m m more out of uh, consideration for animals and, uh, and the environment. Uh, and I sometimes cheat with these. <laughs> I have a glass of wine every other week, or a beer, and uh, fry in oil sometimes. Um, yes. How, 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 but how does the general population eat? Uh, if this is a, a scale, and 100 here means that you, you eat only whole plant foods, and 100 here means that you only eat from the... How, I know the Swedish number, and I'm definite it's roughly the same in Estonia. How, how, where do you think we, we are on, uh, on this scale? If we, if we calculate uh, calorie percent. Any guesses? 50-50? We're actually down here. 85 percent, 80 to 85% of the Swedish uh, calorie intake is uh, animal or processed foods. And this sort of paints a quite clear picture what the, what an enormous uh, opportunity we have to improve <laughs> our diet. And uh, also the potential of uh, dietary change in, in reducing the disease burden. The, uh, what all experts are saying, including the Swedish uh, health authorities, is uh, go roughly here. And um, those of you who were at the debate uh, heard uh, Michael from uh, uh, University of Helsinki explain that the reason why they don't go further is, is well too, mainly because no one would listen if they told everyone to just eat plant-based foods, because we're down here, you have to adapt your message to where the, the general Swede or Finn or, or Estonian is. 
but there is science showing that uh, you, you have benefits of going further and this has been uh, also an inspiration point for me and, and uh, a point that we like to stress in our organization that uh, um, you, you have further benefits. A small, if you make a small uh, dietary change, it, uh, it has a small benefit for your health. If you make a greater one, it has a great impact. And uh, I think this is a, a very ins a more inspiring message than uh, saying just change a little and everything will be fine. If you uh, tell, if you show people the science that uh, you, you, you have uh, great health effects if you make big changes in your diet, you're you're telling people that you have power, you have control over your health. And uh, I think this is something very reassuring to know that, okay, I, no matter how healthy I eat, I, sure, I can, I, can, I can die or, or uh, suffer from a disease. The risk is never zero, but I can, I can make, I, I have control over my health in, in quite a large extent. I personally feel very reassured by this. Um, the studies that, that show these great benefits, there are, I'm going to show some of them, but there are quite a lot. And the most important are cardiovascular disease, you, that it's possible to reverse cardiovascular disease. What they did in, uh, in, these, in uh, three of these studies, what they, they, they did a cardio... Uh, coronary, coronary gram, um, uh, an X-ray of the vessels, and then you can measure how how thick are the vessels and how or how on the inside. You, you look um, uh, how uh, tight how, how tight they have become from atherosclerosis plaques. And then you do. Then they did the same after five years on a plant-based diet and. And um, the reason they did this, their, uh, their hy hypothesis was that they could, they could um, uh, break the, the progression, that the, the disease wouldn't progress as fast as otherwise. But they, as I've said, they found almost, <laughs> it was almost like a miracle that the d disease had reversed. And... Uh, this is this is information is starting to come out the past two years. I I lectured at um, the university clinic in Örebro in Sweden, and uh, a few weeks later they or decided to serve on their ward for inpatients. They they serve vegetarian diet as a default. You can order fish if you absolutely must. Another disease. Uh, that also shows fairly strong, I would say, is diabetes. There have been, since the 80s, studies where um, you, you take uh, patients uh, uh, to um, uh, a health, health center and uh, they eat uh, plant. This was um, more or less plant. They could eat uh, one serving of fish every week, but uh, the rest was whole plant foods. And this is the glucose levels uh, during these three weeks. And you see every week they, it keeps getting lower and lower. But the most remarkable thing is this small number. It shows how many people are eating their diabetes pills. And at the start, all of them, 23, were eating like diseases like metformin or glu glucophage. And, and just after one week, there's only five of them, and after two weeks, it's only two of them that still requires their medication. So within three weeks, you, 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 can, you can almost say that 90% are cured. They're cured from their diabetes. Uh, this is an even older study where people lay in a hospital and was served uh, uh, plant-based uh, foods. For, uh, and 
This is the amount of insulin they required was reduced to more than half, and this is the amounts of patients uh, that required insulin, and almost half were off their medication completely, their insulin. It's more difficult to affect uh, a type 2 diabetic patient uh, who has insulin because the disease has progressed longer. And also, uh, I'd like to stress that this is type 2 diabetes we're talking about. Diet doesn't have this effect on type 1 diabetes because then your pancreas has stopped producing insulin and that doesn't, doesn't help to... It's good to eat more healthy, but you will still need your insulin. Um, this is... Uh, diabetes patients where the disease has progressed very long, you can get complications like um, um, it's called you see, diabetic neuropathy and it means that the nerves most uh, commonly in the legs and feet are being uh, harmed by, by the uh, diabetes and you get pain from this and uh, uh, it, it's described a uh, very sharp burning pain and these patients were sent to a health clinic for uh, three we uh, four weeks I think and uh, they ate a vegan diet of uh, plant foods whole plant foods and uh, what do you think happened already or it says here complete relief of pain in 17 of 25 patients uh, occurred in 4 to 16 days and uh, this, I would also say, is one of these completely r miraculous studies, uh, which I think every diabetes patient should uh, have knowledge on. We're talking here about years, maybe decades of suffering that is over within, within days. That's the power of food. They also did a long uh, follow-up in one to four years, and the results... Uh, were the same or better. Uh, Neil Barnard, the chair of the um, Physicians Committee, have also done uh, one of these studies. Um, the, the results uh, were better for the, the it was a randomized group. The half uh, ate a vegan diet and half had a conventional um, di dietary advice from uh, American Diabetes Association. And it was better for their blood sugar levels, also more uh, weight loss, I think. Uh, this was not in patients, it was out patients. And then you, you always get a curve that looks like this, unfortunately, because a certain percentage uh, starts cheat cheating <laughs> after a few, uh, few months. But still. Um, there have been s recent one or two years in the media <coughs> studies that individually actually uh, normally you say that one study doesn't prove anything but if you if you make a study well enough it still can say quite a lot this was an oxford study that made all these headlines in the media um, mm, it was uh, march uh, 2016 so it's a little more than a year ago i think the independent summarized best. Vegetarian and vegan diets could save millions of lives and cut global warming. If you're in, you could also add vegetarian and vegan diets could save millions of human lives and billions of animal lives. Correct? This is how the study uh, looked. This was. Um, uh, there is a study called The Global Burden of Disease, which is published by the World Health Organization, where the leading experts of the world have uh, done uh, estimates of how much different environmental impacts uh, uh, affect our risks of dying and, and getting ill. And uh, uh, these researchers used the same methodology and uh, and made estimates how how many how many pre um, uh, what's the word pre uh, pre time deaths um, can you um, uh, stop if people start eating according to uh, global recommendations like uh, from uh, 
uh, from the Nordic uh, nutrition recommendations, etc. And then, then they made a comparison. If let's say they went further and went vegetarian, and uh, then a third comparison. If everyone went vegan, <laughs> what would happen? And uh, it's, it, uh, it shows without doubt that you, you get a stepwise improvement. If you follow a generally accepted guidelines, you would avoid uh, about 5.3 deaths worldwide. And the vegetarian, you would get uh, 7.5 or something, and then vegans even better. And uh, they also, it was also the same when you looked at environmental benefits and also healthcare benefits, uh, its costs. The uh, global economy would improve. So it's, it's a bit strange that uh, governments and uh, health organizations doesn't tout a, a vegan diet more than they do. Uh, but I think they will in the near future. Um, this uh, just bra bracing through this is a study that came three weeks ago just to show that th there's a quite a lot of interest in the research world at the moment and the past couple of years this was uh, researchers did a did a, a grading of evidence for benefits of a plant-based diet uh, they, they have, a, for example, reverse atherosclerosis as a fair evidence uh, that, it's, uh, that you can reverse atherosclerosis with a, a plant-based diet and, and many other diseases. Cataract uh, has weak, but still it's not, uh, n nothing. It's not nothing, but we have studies uh, showing for many diseases. Uh, this came out just uh, last week, actually, so I, I just show it. Because uh, the, the researchers also did a review of uh, existing evidence, and uh, we can read their conclusion together. Uh, they concluded uh, that a vegetarian diet present an effective means for the prevention and treatment of cardiometabolic diseases. Properly planned vegetarian diets are healthful and effective for weight and glycemic control and provide metabolic and cardiovascular benefits, including reversing atherosclerosis, decreasing blood lipids and blood pressure. The cardiometabolic benefit seems to be greater with vegan diet than lacto-ovo-vegetarian diets. The use of plant-based diets as a means of prevention and treatment of cardiometabolic disease deserves to be promoted through dietary guidelines and recommendations. This is like uh, sweet music to my ears. Uh, <clears throat> if you're uh, an advocate of vegan uh, eating, uh, this sentence, uh, well, this whole sentence is um, an important message, uh, but Please note that it says uh, that the benefits seems, seem to be greater with vegan than lacto over vegetarian diets. Uh, so it doesn't say that it's finally scientifically proven that vegan is better, but the science available suggests this. It's a, it's a slight difference. So, um, but so some, some uh, degree of... Uh, uh, hum, 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 humility is, is in place, but uh, you should still, um, uh, I think still everyone should know this. The data looks very promising. Another thing is um, if you, every, um, uh, every other um, uh, general recommendation from uh, national authorities and expert panels, they usually create what's called a uh, a diet index, and they use this so that people can make uh, tests. Uh, you, can, you probably have an app on your phone, or you can get one that grades your um, diet. And if it's a good app, it will probably use um, a generally accepted uh, uh, diet index. One famous is the Mediterranean Diet Index. There's one from the US, the one they use is Healthy Eating Index, it's called. And these researchers, uh, um, they collected, uh, I think it was 2,000 people, uh, well, 1,500 people, and there was uh, about uh, 100 vegans, 500 vegetarians, and uh, all of them uh, 
stated exactly what they ate, and then they received a grading point according to generally accepted guidelines. And these guidelines doesn't doesn't uh, promote anyone to be vegan, but it's still an important point to know that in a way they do, because the vegan the, the vegans in this group, they receive the highest index values and the omnivorous the lowest for, for this index. This is healthy eating index, Mediterranean diet index. So this is another reason I think that uh, health authorities should have a very positive tone towards uh, the, the vegan eating, vegans and veganism. And I think they will. How is it with cancer? I've mentioned now cardiovascular disease. And uh, maybe you noticed in this evidence grade that cancer, I don't think cancer was one of them. Uh, because I'm, as a cancer doctor, I, I often get these questions. And I've noticed over time that my, even though I'm a great enthusiast of the power of foods, when it comes to cancer, I often have to, I often have to play a reverse role as a, no, <laughs> because uh, there are there are some people, and even even um, uh, quite a few, but uh, there are um, health clinics uh, uh, that actually actually goes out in the media and says that if you come to my health resort, you, we can we can reverse your cancer, or, or even worse, we can cure your cancer. Don't take chemotherapy. And this is a disaster and it uh, has no scientific uh, base. And this is why uh, I would say uh, cancer research uh, organization doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, tell cancer patients to go vegan. Um, if, um, I, I don't do that either as an oncologist. But if someone is vegan, I, I, I encourage them to keep going. Uh, there's nothing, but it's not shown with convincing science that it's uh, definitely better. The World Cancer Research Fund has a has their flag quite high, as you notice. But uh, we're going to look at some important points. The first thing is supplements. Is it better for your health to eat supplements? Well, you need B12 if you're eating a plant-based diet or even if you're just approaching a plant-based diet and eat fish once or twice a week, you definitely need B12. Uh, and vitamin D, I would uh, recommend e everyone to eat um, when you're not in the sun. And, uh, uh, but there are some, there's some vitamins that actually can be dangerous. Um, beta carotene, vitamin E, and vitamin A, if you eat it in a high dose. Uh, there are some maybes. Um, algae or fish oil, if you don't eat fish, if you don't eat any fat fish, or, or you can, uh, you can, you can um, get too little of a very long omega-3 acids uh, that are essential, but it's, um, they're not really essential because the body makes them, but some people, a few percent of the population, makes too little. So if you want to be really, really sure, you can, um, uh, you can take it. Uh, it's probably more cheaper though if you go to a private lab, if, if you have one, and check your levels. And if you're normal, then you don't need to eat it because they're quite expensive. <laughs> probably cheaper to check. I haven't checked mine. Um, and um, I, I take I take one of these from uh, from my girlfriend. She eats them once a week. <laughs> Iodine is uh, hasn't so much to do with if uh, it has to do with if you eat fish or not. Fish and the seafood contains iodine, and but if you have maybe a quarter of a tablespoon of um, salt iodine salt you 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 won't get iodine deficiency but if you're eating very healthy some some uh, take salt away from their diet completely and then you uh, it's good to have a iodine tablet as well or some kelp uh, I've already talking for 50 minutes so okay can I take five more thanks um, because vitamin D, uh, you might have heard that uh, some some uh, um, some uh, 
even scientists, uh, but I think they're a minority, say that you should eat a lot of vitamin D. And it has to do with studies like this. Uh, this is the risk of dying during the follow-up. And this is the level of vitamin D. And um, it's adjusted for age, uh, sex, uh, and the season. Uh, so there could be other factors, uh, of course. But you see, if you have a deficiency, the risk of um, the level of deficiency is somewhere here. You, you get a high risk of dying during the follow-up. Um, and then it goes low, lower and lower, and it's, uh, the, the optimum looks like it's somewhere here. And if you eat the recommended dose, you won't get here. To the recommended dose in Sweden is 800 units per day, well, including uh, a diet. And um, that will land you somewhere here. Um, so I, I'm just mentioning this and also mentioning that the evidence for this hypothesis is quite weak. But uh, it's not dangerous to take a little more. The maximum dose is 4,000 units or 100 micrograms. If you eat more than this, you risk of uh, getting a D-vitamin intoxication. But uh, you, personally, I don't eat any fish. I eat very little seafood. And um, oh, sorry, <laughs> seafood. Uh, I I eat. Uh, I don't eat fat fish, and then you get a little lower intake. I don't go to the sun at all because uh, I get burnt. So I eat a little higher, actually, around 1,000, 2,000 a day. But it's nothing I specifically recommend. You can, anyone can do what they like. But uh, when it comes to uh, uh, supplements, they're different between a chemical supplement that says just uh, vitamin C. And there are also natural supplements, like food supplements, that uh, basically just consists of food. And uh, I mean, there are no randomized studies on those, but there you can um, you can uh, just just use your common sense. It's uh, it's food, and if you have a if you in some health store foods, they have supplements, usually in a powder bag. Uh, and if you look on the back side and it says something like this, this is in Swedish, but it sounds basically the same in all languages, spirulina, chlorella, uh, barley grass, wheat grass, uh, uh, beets, maca, ginseng, uh, guara, ariona, shisandra. <laughs> uh, I uh, personally take uh, one of these a week. Uh, I can't say how much uh, difference it makes, but the funny thing is that these are food items that you normally don't cook. And if you add like a, a teaspoon or a tablespoon of this, uh, you, you get a, a lot of foods, a lot of different foods at once, and uh, nutri very nutrient-dense foods. So you get a lot of nutrients that you otherwise wouldn't get in their natural form. And this uh, leads us uh, to the question of superfoods. I would say that um, uh, there is true that some, if you measure the uh, oxidant activity, the antioxidant activity of a food, that's one way of uh, seeing how healthy it is or how healthy it could be. Uh, some are higher than other. For example, um, goji berry is higher than blueberries. But the question is, should you just eat goji berries then and not eat instead of blueberries? No. Uh, why not? Well, there's something called food synergy and, uh, uh, that I like. And uh, it's mainly laboratory studies yet. But if you take, uh, this is uh, raspberries and adzuki beans, and you measure the um, antioxidant um, capacity, this is adzuki beans and this is uh, raspberries, and you put them together, uh, how the, you you would expect to land here if you had them together, but when you do, you land here. So for some magical reason, f different food items, different plant food items seems to, put, seems to synergize each other. So one plus two never equals two, it usually equals two plus three. And uh, um, so this probably uh, 
makes it a great health benefit so of eating as varied as possible, not choosing between different plant foods. This is grapes and onions. It doesn't sound like a very nice mix, but this is the grapes, how much, this is cancer in a petri dish, and you add more and more grapes, and uh, it grows less and less, and this is uh, onion. And if you would put them together, you would uh, expect to land here in the middle, but you don't. You, you, you get a synerg synergetic effect. And then, of course, the more variation you have in your food, the more um, uh, nutrients you get and less risk of uh, uh, deficiency. There are also different kinds of foods that increase the uptake when you take them together. So, uh, color is uh, one, one good way of uh, looking at achieving maximum variation. Eat as colorful as you can and as many colors as possible. Is it good to avoid soy? No, it isn't. It's a, have you ever read somewhere that soy is bad for your health? It's, uh, it's uh, uh, complete nonsense. It's, um, it's one organization called the Western A. Price Foundation that's behind this, uh, this myth that soy should, is bad. Uh, uh, one of their leaders, Kalia Daniel, have, have even written a large book that's uh, unfortunately a bestseller. And it doesn't contain any, any relevant science. Uh, if you look at what the Cancer Research Fund says um, for breast cancer survivors, people who have ha women who have had breast cancer, they recommend a healthy body weight, being physically active, eating foods containing fiber, and eating foods containing soy. It's uh, beneficial if, uh, if you've had breast cancer. It will uh, reduce the risk of, of dying later. Same with uh, the American Institute of Cancer Research. They list soy among foods that fight cancer. Uh, gluten. There's a also funny gluten trend that people have an uh, idea that it's healthy to avoid gluten. So 1% of the population needs have, has to do it. They have celiac disease and it's an autoimmune disease. So you, you become very ill if you eat gluten. Gluten intolerance. There's new research showing that maybe an additional percent has what's called non-celiac disease gluten sensitivity, which means they go to their doctor and they test. And the doctor says, uh, no, you're, you're not sensitive. You're, you're fine, you don't have celiac disease. But they still have this reaction when they eat gluten. It's not sure that it's gluten. It might be something else in white flour. But then uh, my advice is don't, don't expect Experiment. If you suspect celiac disease, go to your doctor and test yourself. But if you, if you don't have it and you don't get stomach upset from uh, from gluten containing, um, don't don't avoid gluten. But uh, it's it's a definitely a health benefit to swap processed grain for whole grain. And as I said earlier, with um, with um, uh, synergetic effect, eat as many different kinds as possible. If you, this is oatmeal, oats. This is, if you're making oatmeal, uh, try to find some misli variant that has just uh, wheat, that has both wheat, rye, and uh, barley, and, and uh, oats. Non-organic foods. This is the last point. Uh, uh, have you heard that it's healthier to eat organic? It might be, um, but I think it's um, very important when, both when you decide for yourself and when you talk to others to, to be aware of the scientific base. And there really isn't a scientific base to, to say that it's uh, harmful to eat non-organic foods. So, but if you yourself decide to do it, uh, by all means do, but but don't go around telling people or warn people that it's dangerous and that it's a fact, because it's not. Please uh, apply a humble message when there isn't any knowledge. Uh, there, there are estimations done, it's quite an old study, but it was an estimation done if, if half the US population would increase its intake of fruit and vegetable consumption by one serving, you would, you would um, 
uh, would prevent 20,000 cancer uh, cases per year. And then they did another interesting uh, calculation. How many extra? Uh, suppose this isn't organic fruits and vegetables. It's, um, uh, and uh, how many extra cancer cases would you get from all this pesticide? Uh, it, it's 10. So you see the, the two, two important points, I think. One, uh, it, it doesn't matter um, uh, that much, but it's 10 cancer cases per year. It's not zero. Uh, so uh, the, the benefits probably isn't zero, but it's very little. Uh, the, our uh, National Health or, or, uh, Authority has uh, very good information on their website, yours probably too. Uh, for instance, um, you have to eat 20 kilos of fruit per day to get a hazardous amount of uh, pesticides. And there is more antioxidants in organic fruits. Uh, so this could, uh, well, at least on a population level, uh, maybe lead to slight benefit. Um, there's no difference in mold toxins and bacteria. This is something that some people who doesn't like organic food says, that you, you get all sorts of mold and, and that's worse than the pesticides, but there's no difference. And thirdly, all this science I've shown you, that it's good to eat fruits and vegetables, it's done on, on, uh, on non-organic fruits and vegetables, so you definitely can't say it's harmful. Then you're way out. Yes, so that was basically it. This is, uh, please keep this triangle in mind. Try to move as far up as possible. And um, don't forget the flowers on your way out. Now it's, I think it's time for Fika. Thank you very much for your, for your attention. And uh, we'll meet back at the Q&A. Hi, you mentioned a lot about animals and uh, a love for animals, and uh, this is more of a personal question, less to do with perhaps veganism, but I'm just, it would just made me curious as to your path to veganism. Did you have like pets as a child, or is, is this, did, you, did your first step start off with your love for animals, and then it spiraled and rippled into other factors and reasons for becoming a, a vegan? Just something I certainly noticed that very animal, you seem like a much of an animal lover, so... Is this to do with family pet a home uh, as a child or continue to own and care for pets? That's so, my question. Yes, personal question. Why did I start? Why did I become a vegan? Um, well, long story short, I, I didn't care for animals at all, and uh, I uh, actually don't like animals. Uh, we have a we have a rabbit at home. I love him, but um, if um, I. <coughs> um, but um, uh, it's, a, it's a funny story. It's, it maybe takes two minutes. I think I'm going to tell it. It's, uh, we had in Sweden in the 80s, there was a rhinoceros uh, called uh, Nelson that was uh, uh, born uh, at the Skansen Zoo, one of the biggest zoos, or maybe it was called Morden. And he was ill when he came out. And uh, this... this united the whole of Sweden and everyone followed in the, the television and all the evening newspapers had stories every day about Nelson. And I remember I was so annoyed by this. I, I think I was about 11 or 12 years old and I, felt, and I, I thought, there's something seriously wrong here. We're, we're slaughtering animals like millions and eating them and here is... Uh, Eight million people crying over a rhinoceros. How, it's, it's right to care for the rhinoceros. And what we should be changing is, is uh, the way we treat other animals. So I stopped eating. Uh, I became a flexitarian about 20 years ago and I ate fish off and on for five, uh, ten years. And then ten years ago, I, I, when I started to be more interested in nutrition, I realized full stop that dairy and eggs were unnecessary. I didn't need them. 
and it was more environmental reasons that made me uh, cut them from the menu because if they're unnecessary and they pollute the environment more, why, why should I choose them? And I also think I had aid from the vegan uh, trend that was uh, starting, that it was possible to be vegan. You could go to this without too much trouble. When we, uh, we went to New York and uh, you had 30 vegan restaurants in, um, in Manhattan. And, uh, I, so, and then, uh, and then uh, uh, when I read more and more on, on the health benefits, it really baffled me, especially as I said on, on uh, uh, cardiovascular disease. And the, but the, there are uh, suggesting evidence that uh, what's optimal for our health is uh, if not a completely plant-based, then at least a near complete plant-based diet. It's the best bet we have today if we want to optimize our health. So um, that's, that's my focus today, but I, I don't think I've forgotten the animals. <laughs> I hope not, not the environment either. <laughs> Hello. I found really interesting the supplements part of your presentation. Mm -hmm. the, it, you said that uh, some supplements are harmful, vitamin A, beta carotene. Yeah. Could you elaborate on that? Uh, what dosages or uh, are there more vitamins or that? Yes. Maybe we shouldn't be taking. No, basically, it's what them. Uh, there are. Uh, some studies to suggest that uh, vitamin C is also bad, but that you increase your risk of um, kidney stones. But it ha uh, I think the researchers think it has al also to do with um, a tablet form. Most people eat uh, vitamin C as a, as a fizzy tablet, which has a lot of uh, other other things in it. Um, there's some, some indication on folate, if you eat too much folate in tablet form, that it might, but there are few uh, studies, so the, the short answer is no, these are the only ones. And uh, the, if I should elaborate, it's actually one study, uh, so one study isn't proving anything, but there's one study actually behind this recommendation, it's a Finnish study that was done in the 80s, it was called the CARET study and uh, what they did was they uh, noticed in the blood of people uh, that died from lung cancer they saw that the people who lived longer uh, had higher levels of beta carotene and retinol and the hypothesis was if we can give uh, this to smokers we will reduce the the incidence of uh, of um, lung cancer. So they took thousands of people who were smokers, randomized them into two groups, half had a sugar pill and the other half had beta carotene and retinol and um, they followed them and just after five or ten years they, uh, they noticed that it was actually the other way around. The people who received these pills, they had uh, more cancer. They also had more cardiovascular disease and more of them died so they stopped prematurely and I think it's a, also a very interesting study that shows an important point that I tried to make that you don't you, you, you can use a chemical supplement like vitamin D to prevent uh, uh, insufficiency uh, but it doesn't boast your health uh, but whole plant foods do uh, so the, the optimum way of getting antioxidants, phytonutrients, and uh, vitamins, minerals, and uh, um, is is through food. Hey, um, in the beginning of the presentation, you brought out uh, six benefits of veganism: uh, health, environment. Um, what was there? Uh, economy was one, and that um, kind of made me puzzled. I guess. I mean, I, I, I'm guessing that um, your logic is that people will be healthier, uh, th thus more productive, and thus the uh, GDP will increase, right? That's the logic, basically. Yes. But uh, then again, like mm -hmm. I was thinking, you're an oncologist, right? So um, in a way, it will disrupt um, 
your work, I, I suppose, in a way, because there will yeah. be less patience for you to... Yeah, I'll be unemployed. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> so, I mean, there, are, there will be a lot of um, these markets that will be disrupted. I mean, pharmaceuticals will be one, and um, uh, the meat industry, obviously. So, I you know, just, your, could you, like, elaborate more on yeah, that topic? Yeah, if we're, yes, I think every change... Um, I don't have an ultimate answer. I think a national economist might give a better answer. But uh, just intuitively, I, I don't think it's... Um, uh, if, if we can bring about a change with a healthier population, the, the benefits will definitely outweigh any risks or costs. And it will also go be a gradual change. So... Um, uh, the people who are not no longer needed oncologists and uh, we can uh, we have a lot of time to <laughs> do other things I, I would love to spend all my times uh, lecturing like this instead I, I like being an oncologist also <clears throat> but um, um, there was something else I was going to say um, but that's a short answer um, I think it's gradual. Sometimes uh, you can hear uh, uh, people say, what, "What if we stop eating animals? Where are they going to go?" And, and it's, a, it's an extreme variety of the same thing. I think if, if we have a, a smooth, gradual change, uh, society can sustain it and adapt. Mm. That's. But. From the front. Uh, in your presentation, you talked about processed foods, and um, I'm thinking about my diet ever since I became vegan, and um, should uh, vegan be conscious about processed food as well, especially as uh, in Estonia recently, uh, the supermarkets have been um, catering to vegans more and more you can find fake cheese and um, fake meat and so on. I mean, should I be uh, conscious of buying canned uh, beans, for example? Canned chickpeas, is that considered processed foods? Mm, yeah, very good question. What is processed and uh, what is not? Um, with processed, you mean uh, actually that it's been um, uh, divided or, or chemically... Uh, that you take the different nutrients of a food and, and take them apart and you take only one and the normal uh, the, the health hazardous processing is the one the most common one that's it's the one when you take away nutrients and like white flour it's uh, I'm really amazed uh, that uh, this information doesn't hasn't reached a broader population the, the health risk of uh, eating, of processing flour. Uh, sure, it, it, might, it might, it's easier to swallow and it tastes a little different, but uh, when you take whole, whole wheat and make it into white flour, you take, for some nutrients, you take away as much as 90% of uh, the nutrients. And uh, same thing with the sugar. Sugar is uh, from a, a beet. Um, and if you eat a whole beet, you get a lot of fiber, you get a lot of nutrients. There's zero, zero fiber, zero nutrients. It's just uh, sugar. And uh, But uh, to process is not um, to cook or, um, or to um, pickle or uh, some... Uh, uh, it's, it, if, so as long as there, there's a hole... Um, a whole whole um, um, plant, and uh, but it's a it's a very um, uh, interesting question. Uh, there are raw food uh, advocates that uh, sometimes a little too aggressively tout that you should uh, you should you shouldn't cook it and you should eat this, uh, as as uh, close to the the more time it takes from when you pick it, the nutrients just. Pfft, disappear. This is, of course, uh, false. Uh, it has just a grain of truth in it. It might drop a few percent, but not significantly. 
but I, I, I think I, the question will come uh, because uh, everyone asks it. Uh, rel uh, uh, I think everyone wants to know the uh, all these soya um, burgers that are being sold. Uh, those are processed and um, uh, and differently processed. You can get uh, some. S I think what you need to do is look at the package and try to figure out how processed is this. There, there are soya sausages that, uh, when you look at the back, it says 80% uh, tofu. Uh, that means that they are made of uh, squashed uh, soya beans, so they're very minimally processed. If you have a package that says soy protein, it means that they have taken away nutrients and fiber and just uh, you just have the protein left. So it's a, a worse option, but I would not say that it's harmful. I would say they, they would probably lie here. It's a food item that you can add to your food once or twice a week and it won't, pro it won't do any harm. Same as uh, oil or drinking a glass of wine. But... Uh, Keep focus here. It's fine. Yeah. But David, maybe adding to that, what about the cheese specifically? Oh, Soy yeah, cheese. cheese. That yes. was asked. Same thing, really. Cheese is unfortunately a disappointment, generally. If you look at cheese, most brands actually consist of uh, coconut fat and water. And that's a very poor substitute for cheese, nutrition wise. Uh, there are some brands, uh, I don't know if they're sold here, but if you again look at uh, what they're made of, and uh, some are made of nuts, and those are definitely your best uh, option if you want to replace cheese. Uh, the other ones that just made of coconut oil is just fat, so don't, don't use too much of them, use them as a spice, they're, they don't do anything for you nutrition-wise. Um, that's my advice. Any more questions? Thank you for this presentation. Uh, there was uh, recently an article in Estonian media uh, which was based on a study of vegans and uh, uh, the, uh, the media had headlines how uh, vegans have a lower bone density and uh, weaker bones and um, I wanted to ask do you think that uh, calcium is uh, something vegans should pay particular attention to and uh, do you have any uh, comments about uh, bone health for vegans and uh, maybe some uh, uh, easy uh, ways how to increase uh, calcium uh, intake, maybe some easy tips. Yeah, ca uh, calcium intake. Um, I think uh, you should be aware if um, there is, a, I don't know this particular study, but there is a study, a huge um, European cohort study called the EPIC study, who actually analyzed uh, vegans in Britain and they found on average that vegans actually had a higher fracture rate than, uh, than the average population. But uh, then they divided and only looked at uh, the vegans who ate, I think it was less than 300 milligrams, uh, or if it was 400 uh, per day, and those who ate more, it was about half-half, and those who ate more did not have a higher fracture rate. And to eat as, as little as 300 milligrams, you really have, it's quite a poor diet. And um, to get up to the recommend, recommended levels, in uh, the UK, it's 600 milligrams per day. In Sweden, it's 700 milligrams. In the US, it's 1,200 milligrams. Uh, probably, if you ask me, as an effect of uh, dairy industry influence. But if you look at 600 milligrams, you can easily get it just uh, eating a lot of fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds. And um, you can also have calcium in, in uh, orange uh, fruits and vegetables like uh, 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 carrots and, uh, and uh, what are they called in English? Uh, pumpkins and uh, things like that. 
um, but uh, and also kale, broccoli. So if you if you eat this uh, regularly, you'll definitely end up uh, uh, with sufficient amount. But if you if you, I mean, uh, everyone isn't able to just eat or. And if you if you know that your your diet is, is slightly lower and you have a lot of processed food, then I would recommend a multi multivitamin uh, tablet that contains uh, calcium, just to be sure. But um, and uh, also with with bone health, there are many other issues to consider. The vitamin D, uh, as I said, I recommend everyone to take it, no matter if you're vegan or not. It's more dependent on sun exposure and um, uh, also exercise of course the more uh, if you don't exercise it doesn't matter how much calcium you eat you'll still have a fragile bone and uh, not smoking uh, not drinking uh, too much uh, uh, sugary drinks many factors now uh, more questions um, firstly before i just to premise this question uh, um, I actually am really pleased uh, to have come out here and uh, observed and witnessed and taken information from your lecture. So, uh, but I, I acknowledge that I am asking these questions to be pretty much difficult. Um, I like to challenge my uh, my ideas. Uh, you mentioned uh, within your lecture how um, you know there are some with the Time magazine. Uh, graphic how some you know here's a journalist that uh, maybe looking for a juicy this or that sell some papers maybe not able to disseminate information as um, as well as uh, they should be in, you know with poor journalistic skills or whatever well, what would you have to say to possible counter arguments well this is an oncologist he's not a nutritionist how is he able to better disseminate information better than a journalist whose job it is to know how to investigate and so on and so forth when this is something that this gentleman is doing in his just free time. Um, and also as well, just to follow on perhaps on what the gentleman at the back was asking, um, how do you, um, so just to be sure, how do you feel that you're justified in saying that I am that you are not working against your own self-interest profession-wise, that you're not putting yourself out of a job? And the final uh, related question to that is, uh, just out of curiosity, after having watched uh, what the health documentary I'm just, I was just wondering out of curiosity, have you ever found yourself in a predicament by you know, greater powers that be in your, in your occupation to want you to be on message with something that you disagree with information-wise, nutrition-wise, or you know, to this type of pressure? I imagine, you know, well, I'll just leave it there. So there's, there's quite a lot there. Yeah, I've, I've yeah, asked. Sorry. See if I can remember them all, but uh, one the first question was for roughly, can we trust uh, journalists? Um, uh, um, yeah, uh, the nutrition argument, expert know, or a journalist? No, or well, you, you're or an oncologist. Who's you know the argument? Uh, well, this guy's just a, a journalist whose job it is to uh, you know do investigative reporting, and yeah. maybe whether or not how well they do it, that's up for discussion. But yeah. You know, there could be a counter argument. Well, this this gentleman is just an oncologist, so why why is he more valid or more in with the no than someone? And he's not a nutritionist, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I I would uh, I would be very suspicious every time a journalists report anything that contradicts uh, generally accepted guidelines. If uh, if you have you see a headline that says it's not there's no health benefit in eating more fruit. It's uh, then, then someone has uh, stumbled into a hole. And the reason they do it isn't that they're uh, uneducated or, uh, or it's, um, I, think it's, um, I think it's gone worse. Uh, if you look back 20 years, when you had the slower media, they had more time <laughs> to do research. And um, also a lot of, um, uh, Media was based on a deeper analysis. Now um, there's uh, more and more media is privatized, which means uh, you have to earn money, you have to get a lot of clicks, and there's also a hurry. You, you, if there's a new study, you have to report on it the same day it's released. You can't wait a few days. And if you contact a researcher, 
uh, or one of the main experts in Sweden, you write him an email and says, what do you think about this study? He might not get back to you the same day. My, uh, researchers are very busy, so you might get a response in a week. Um, so that's additional reasons. But um, yeah, so I, I would use that as a gating tool. Uh, there was another question, if, I, if I'm coerced by the system to say things I wouldn't, I, I would say no, I, I feel I can say whatever I like, <laughs> whenever I like. Uh, I, I don't have any time. Uh, the system coerces me to talk about um, <clears throat> When I work as an oncologist, the system makes me talk about uh, the treatments that the patient is going to get, uh, the radiotherapy or the chemotherapy, and then uh, the time is out. So there's no, there's no opportunity in the healthcare system today to talk about nutrition, fortunately. Uh, there's one more question. I forgot the last one. I I uh, how do I motivate? Uh, I'm, I'm making myself unemployed uh, by talking here. I, 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 don't, I, th I think it's the same as I said before, that it would be such a smooth and gradual transition. So if, um, uh, if the need of oncologists uh, drop very much, I, I, I can find other things to do. I can open a, a health clinic uh, somewhere by the ocean. <laughs> yes. Hi, uh, I have a question, well, the very sensitive question uh, that always comes up with vegans is the children and pregnant. And uh, uh, when uh, vegan and, uh, and pregnant, uh, which is there any need for extra supplements? Or what is it that uh, one should um, pay more attention to while pregnant? And also the, the other thing is, the other question is that um, how to how to um, um, well, if you go like for example to kindergarten and things like that, that how to um, mix vegan children with uh, um, traditionally fed children and to uh, mm. you know to um, to get them incorporated in there without them being uh, um, being without the kids being having trouble in there yeah yeah so first question if you're pregnant should you think of anything extra and the um, short and categorical uh, answer is no you, you just live as you always do and eat b12 as a vegan and uh, because when you're um, when you're pregnant, I think all countries, uh, at one or other point, they check your, your blood levels. Your, and, if, and it's not a, definitely not only vegan, but many mothers have an increased demand of iron during the pregnancy, so their hemoglobin, the amount of red blood cells, uh, drop. And if it does, you, you are given uh, iron supplements. And it's the uh, same for everyone, vegans, non-vegans. But there's one interesting thing worth mentioning, and that, that's these um, uh, omega-3s, the algae oils, uh, because I said that uh, it's just a few percent of the population that makes too little, uh, and um, so the risk of you having too little during pregnancy and, uh, and when you breastfeed is, is quite small if you don't eat them, but um, uh, and also, secondly, the harm that you cause uh, if, uh, if, you're, if you are too low is, is quite small also. The studies that show a benefit of, um, for children with this long omega-3 uh, acids, there are studies made uh, even, uh, I think even randomized studies where pregnant women are given uh, not algae oils but fish oil, and the children in... Uh, from these mothers are slightly more developed with their eye, eye development and uh, cognitive development and have a slightly higher IQ. But the average, it's significant, but the average difference is mm, very small, just a few points. So, 
but I, I would uh, I would say when it comes to children, I think we should have a, a very high level of security. So uh, I, I actually recommend all uh, 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 women that are pregnant or considering pregnancy to add uh, algae oil. But if you haven't, and if you've forgotten, or if you haven't known, the, the risk of harm is very low. And you should also know that uh, uh, most countries, at least uh, the Swedish um, National Health Authority doesn't recommend algae oils for vegetarians. They recommend that you have an adequate intake of uh, short omega-3s. That is, uh, that you should eat walnuts and uh, rapeseed oil, I think it's called. G granola oil it has a lot of... Uh, oh, not granola. <laughs> What's it called? Canola. Canola. Uh, ca canola. Canola, thank you. And um, uh, it's also in uh, um, hemp, hemp seeds and, and chia seeds. But uh, I, I would uh, still say, if, if you have it around and you can afford it, uh, eat an algae capsule every day during pregnancy, just in case. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, my question is about uh, vitamin B12. You mentioned in your lecture that you would recommend vegans to take supplement B12. Now, this advice applies to also meat eaters, given they have higher chances of getting B12 deficiency. And the second question is, uh, what's your uh, opinion about GMO food, given that you're uh, specialized in cancer? Thank you. Mm. Uh, does uh, only vegans, should only vegans eat B12? Um, no, actually a lot of um, omnivores uh, get B12 uh, deficiency. Not, it's uh, most common by elder people and have um, usually um, uh, the hypothesis is uh, that it has to do with um, um, gastritis uh, or, or what's the English word when you have a stomach ache and uh, your ulcers, yes, uh, ulcers and pre-ulcers and, and uh, if you're old and your uptake uh, goes down with B12, you need a strong capsule. Um, apart from that, I think the risk is low among an average. It's, I think the estimates are about like 5 or 10 percent uh, get B12, too low B12 values. Uh, maybe a single percent might get ill, but then they usually have uh, some genetic problem. Or, or uh, among vegans, it's, uh, it's like different numbers in different studies. But vegans who are not taking B12. That's more than that's like 80 percent who get uh, B12 deficiency. So that, that's why it's so important. And it also it's very treacherous uh, if if you meet a vegan who says I don't need B12 try to shake some sense into the person because even if he has no problem he, and he says I've been not eating B12 for one year that's because um, you have a supply in your liver that can last as long as five or six years and these um, uh, the problems you get can come very slowly so that you don't notice them you get you can get nerve damage and brain damage and when you have it's usually irreversible so it's such a great harm and it's also, it's a, the greatest harm is to the person itself, but it's also great harm for, uh, for uh, the, the, this positive trend of plant-based eating. It takes a, a big toll, uh, especially among the, the healthcare system. This vegan who goes to his doctor and says, and, and shows these symptoms, uh, he he, is, he risks of uh, ending up in the newspaper, and uh, this caretaker will tell everyone at, uh, at the coffee break, and they will tell all of their relatives, and they will have a very strong incentive of never, ever stop uh, eating meat. Uh, yes. Uh, the second question was GMO. Yes, GMO is not uh, has not any scientific. There's no science whatsoever to say that. GMO in itself is dangerous because uh, if you change a gene, uh, it doesn't affect you. It's not like if you eat a, if you eat a tomato, you don't become a tomato. The tomato's DNA doesn't incorporate into you. 
but the danger is that the, why they do the GMO. It's um, like uh, suspicious uh, companies. Uh, there's one who has a very bad name uh, called uh, Monsanto, I think, who are a bit fishy <laughs> sometimes. And they have a, a pesticide called Roundup. The purpose of the GMO is to make the plants withstand pesticide. And this, I think, creates a, a vicious circle of um, using pesticides that are worse and worse for the environment, and they also end up on, on the actual food. But uh, the scientific base that this is harmful uh, is quite low, but uh, they, this GMO crops probably has um, uh, higher even higher levels than just no other non-organic foods, higher levels of pesticides. So. I, w I personally would not eat GMO food, but it's quite rare to find in Europe. I think if it is GMO, you have to put it on very, very clearly on the package. And uh, I think the GMO sold to humans in Europe is, is almost non-existent. Uh, almost every GMO crop goes to animals, uh, animal feeds. Um, questions? Yeah, just while well, I'm taking it over there, as a little footnote, I think um, Roundup was to be banned in the United States until Trump got elected. Oh. Glycosphate. <laughs> so there, but there might be weak evidence, but there is some evidence. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, definitely. Be. Okay, one more. Uh, I have read uh, some articles that the uh, ratio between uh, uh, zinc and copper may not be very good speak in up a uh, little more diet, I can't hear you uh, ratio between uh, zinc and copper in vegan diet i have heard well, i have read some articles that, that uh, this ratio may not be very good uh, too much copper and, and that might lead in long term to anxiety should i be concerned about that <laughs> no no, it's uh, the, the question is the ratio of zinc and copper is um, problem. No, uh, no. Sometimes it's said that vegans get too little zinc, uh, but um, yeah, there are studies that show that vegans have a lower level of zinc in their blood, but it's uh, still within the normal range, so it's uh, no problem. Uh, I, I've. Sorry, no answer. I haven't heard this before, but uh, copper you should uh, try not to eat too much of, but copper you get mostly from animal products, and there are studies suggesting it has an oxidative uh, effect if you have too much, so that it um, uh, might increase the risk of dementia. And, and uh, Yes. Was that last question? Okay, I think, that, I think that's it. Thank you very much, David. Thank you, thank you very much for coming.